After the successful release of her best-selling debut novel, The Russian Concubine, in 2007, British author Kate Furnival became an instant hit in the UK's literary landscape, releasing books such as The Concubine's Secret, The White Pearl and The Liberation. Now, the queen of exotic writing is in the country to promote her latest novel titled The Betrayal, a read that tells the story of sisters Romaine and Florence as they take us back to Paris in the 1930s, an era where the twins were divided by fierce loyalties and a terrible, terrible secret surrounding their father's death. Now, Kate Furnival joins me now in studio this morning to talk more about this book. A very good morning to you, Kate, and uh, welcome. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be here. Absolutely. Now, the two main characters in the book, uh, Romain and Florence, are two different individuals. They live different lives, but then they hold this massive, massive secret about their father's death, death and, uh, and murder. What was the inspiration behind writing this bestseller? Well, it's really a historical thriller. It's about betrayal, as it says on the cover, set in um, Paris, 1948. And uh, when, uh, I'm sorry, 1938, 38, yeah. when the drums of war were just beginning to sound. And it is about the damage that a terrible secret can do to both a family, a, um, a whole community, and to a country. And this starts... It's a very dramatic opening with Romy, as Romaine is called in the book. She wakes up in her father's study with, on the floor with blood on her hands, not knowing what has happened. And she looks around and sees her father dead there with a paper knife in his throat and blood on his chest. And she is obviously frightened, doesn't know what's happened, has no recollection. But her sister comes in, and her sister is her twin. And this is an important aspect of the book. It is what binds the two girls together, two young women. At that point, they're 17. And the sister takes her out of the room, she covers her tracks, and <coughs> takes her upstairs, washes her down in the bath like a dog, and puts forward this plan that to save um, uh, Romy being... Mm taken by the police and guillotined, that they should put the blame on the gardener, uh, which is a huge thing. And so these motivations of love, death and guilt just drive through the book. And this book, from the very first chapter, I look forward to see how it ends. Like, I, I look forward to see whether it's a happy or a sad ending. And, I mean, it takes us on a roller coaster drive uh, as, with every turn of the page as we follow the lives of these two sisters. So take us through the process of developing these two characters. Well, it, it all stemmed from the fact that I am a twin myself. And so I am very aware of this bond that is sort of an unbreakable bond, never mind what happens to you, how far apart you go, even if you're going as these sisters do, in totally different directions. One is, at the time, the political time, one is pro-fascist, um, pro-Hitler, and wants France to connect with Germany, to, start to have an appeasement so there is no war. And her sister, Romy, is very left-wing and helping the Republicans in the Spanish Civil War by flying planes down to, from Paris to, uh, over the Pyrenees to the Spanish forces. And this them. book gives us a, a bit of history about France and the Civil War. Mm. Just how much research goes into, or rather went into publishing this book? A lot. Really? Definitely. I love the research. I have to do... Um, I would like to do months of research, but unfortunately I don't have that luxury now that I have to do a book a year for mm. my publisher. Um, but I, it's the best part of uh, writing a historical books. And I start by reading up books on the political situation and the history of the country. So I know what the background is that I'm working for, which in Paris at the time was the build-up towards the war and the uh, attempts to um, make peace between the countries before it starts, uh, which obviously was in vain. And the two sisters are one on each side. One is married to a, a French diplomat who um, is in meetings with the 
Germans who have come over to Paris to discuss these things. And okay. But once I've read the books, I then go to Paris right. and I just have a wonderful time in Paris. All right. Now, your new book, uh, The Survivor, is coming out, I believe, in October. Give us a sneak peek of that. Oh, my goodness. Oh, <laughs> I have to ask my publisher. Um, this is a book that I have been immensely uh, moved by studying the whole subject. It is about the displaced persons at the end of the war. It's in 1945, Germany, when the whole of Europe was in chaos. There were literally millions and millions of people from Poland, Latvia, um, all over Czechoslovakia, just every country, and Germans themselves and uh, French who had no homes and often no papers to prove who they were. And so their allies, the Americans and the British, set up um, displaced persons camps okay. and people had to live in these. And they were extraordinarily terrible places where anything could happen. Mm -hmm. And lots does happen to this young Polish woman and her daughter. You know, Kate, I've never been this captivated about reading a book. This is the best, one of the best pieces of work that I've laid my hands and my eyes on. That is wonderful to hear. Thank well you. Well done. Well done. Thank you. All right. That's a UK literary star, Kate Furnival. And uh, we were in conversation about the release of her latest book titled The Betrayal, as well as that, uh, sh what she'll be up to during her author tour in South Africa. Well, she'll be launching her book at Exclusive Books in Hyde Park in Johannesburg on the 16th of of May and uh, she'll also be at the Kingsmead Book Fair later on today. All right, let's go for an ad break now.